skills and taking it to another level. And the next level and the next level. <laughs> the seventh level. You just feel how natural it is. You feel how open you become to your prospects. And in response, they usually become more open to you. Founded by Jeremy Miner, Seventh Level is the only friction-free sales system guaranteed to raise revenue. In my life, it's been revolutionary. And his followers are feeling the difference. His training has transformed everything. It is precise, and it really draws out emotions people around the world are starting to catch on we're going to tie in the new model of selling to your product or service that you sell these tools can work for anyone in any industry at any time and it's time to get on board before the ship sets sail it's seventh level with jeremy minor All right, we are live. Let's go ahead and go live on the IG phone, and then we will go live on this phone. I'll have you flip that when that goes back. That bad boy, flipperoo. Okay, so it is Tuesday. So every Tuesday, we have a subject matter training, a live, and we're going live here on seven different freaking platforms. I love social media. So we are going live here on, we got our IG phone here. So I love my, my IG people over there, 605,000 of you follow me around over there. Uh, that thing is growing pretty quickly. We're also going live here on my desktop using StreamYard. I love StreamYard. We're going live in the Facebook group sales revolution, almost 102,000 of you in that one Facebook group. One of many that we have now. So I love you, Sales Revolution Facebook group members. I'm going live on YouTube. Almost at 100 subs on there. I've grown that a uh, little bit over 20,000 new subscribers the last about a month and a half. So that's starting to grow. Going live on LinkedIn. Going live on the Facebook business page now. Close to 170,000 of you running around on the Facebook business page. And going live on my personal Facebook and good old TikTok. I think we're about 105,000, 110,000 over there on TikTok. Those things are growing quickly. Now... Today, we are going to go over a subject that I know a lot of you have some issues with. You ever notice, well, first of all, type in me if you ever call back prospects who maybe you met a month ago or two months ago, you could have met them in person in their office or home. If you sell B2C or B2B, you might have talked with them on the phone, or you might have met them virtually or on their doorstep, whatever you sell, they didn't buy. And then you follow up with them a month later, two months later, six months later, a year later. And when you originally had talked to them, you were shocked that they didn't buy because they had all these problems that you could solve. You didn't really know why they didn't buy. And when you call them back a couple months later, they still have the same issues, yet they what? They try to get rid of you quickly when you follow up with them. It's like they don't even, they act like they don't even remember who you are. They act like you're just straight on cold calling them. Type in me if that happens to you. Because if that happens to you, so if you're on IG or TikTok, type in me. If you're in the Facebook group, Sales Revolution or YouTube or LinkedIn or the Facebook business page, type in me. I know what happens to each one of you. Been in the ball game for a few years. If that happens... What triggered that? Did the prospect wake up that morning and say, you know what? When Jane calls me today about three o'clock, I know we haven't talked about five months. I know my problems are pretty much the same. I'm still in status quo. I'm still having the same issues. But you know what? When she calls me because her tone sounds a bit excited and a little bit high pitched at the end of her first question, I think I'm going to go into fight or flight mode and say, oh, no, we're good. We got that handled or no, 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 I'm not interested. And I'm just going to try to get rid of her quickly. Did they plan that out before you made a follow up call? Or was that a triggered reaction based on what you're saying and how you're using your tone that's triggering that reaction? and their instinctual part of their brain, we call that the survival part of their brain, to go into fight or flight mode. 
is it them planning it or a triggered reaction based on us and what we're saying and how we're using our tone? It's us. The moment we can start to understand that when we do, let's just say in this example, a follow-up call from somebody who didn't buy that you'd already talked to, that we are the ones responsible for them trying to get rid of us is the moment we stop blaming our prospects and take responsibility that we just haven't acquired the right skill level yet. We haven't learned how to use our tone to influence prospects to let their guard down. And we have not learned yet. Notice I said yet how to ask the right questions at the right time that triggers the prospect to want to engage and want to open up emotionally. That's the question we probably should be asking ourselves. Now, today, I'm going to show you a generic version that's not industry specific on how to start a follow up call. Now, when I say follow up call, I mean somebody you've already talked to could have been on the phone, could have been in person, could have been virtually you've already talked to. And for whatever reason, they just didn't buy. And now you're just calling them back. Could be weeks or months down the road. Okay. That's a follow up call. I hate the word follow up. Okay. Now I'm going to show you generic version. And then I picked out seven different industries, seven different ones, B2B and B2C, business to consumer and business to business. And I'm going to show you out of those seven industries, how to craft it for what you sell. We train 161 different industries, including yours watching me. What am I wearing today? This black Hugo Boss shirt. How many industries are there in the world? According to Forbes, there's only 163. There are subsets of each one of those. If you sell, for example, if you sell home improvement, that's one industry, but that include that could include you sell windows or you might work for a company that only sells doors, or you might work for a company that only sells tile or decks or pools or remodeling bathrooms for elderly people. So they don't fall. They're not, you know, cabinets could be countertops, could be carpeting. That would all be included in one industry home improvement. Okay. Every industry on here watching me, we already train companies and or salespeople are both in your space. So I'm going to give you seven different examples but I'm going to show you the formula so you can craft that first question to be able to do that. Now, if you are brand new to the Facebook group and you just started following me there, or maybe you started following me here on Instagram, I got the Instagram phone right there. Okay. Jeremy, any updates with the fraud lawsuit against you in Orange County, Florida? I don't have any fraud lawsuit in Orange County, Florida. We're a sales training company. Maybe you have the wrong Jeremy Miner. Let me tell you a story about that. I don't know who you are right there. That was kind of a gotcha question. Oh, you got me. You got me. I didn't even know that there's a lawsuit. We don't have lawsuits. We're a sales training company. So I have, I'll give you an example of this. About eight years ago, there's this girl that I was dating and I brought her, don't tell anybody, I brought her to this house that I was about to rent. It's a huge mansion. Me and my friends were going to rent it. Okay. I just gone through a divorce and we're, it's like the bachelor pad. And it was, it was really, it was quite pricey. It was about 15 grand a month. We're talking about like a 12,000 square foot estate. Okay. Here in South Mountain in Arizona by uh, South of Phoenix. And the landlord, you know, they do background checks. He sets me down. He's like, Hey, I did a background check. And uh, you came up that you assaulted a police officer in Delaware back in 2006. And unfortunately, we're not going to be able to rent this home to you. And I'm sitting here, this girl that I just started dating, I'm sitting there like, who are you? Like, you're some crazy dude. You assaulted a police officer. I'm like, what is going on? I'm like, what? I don't understand what you mean. He's like, yeah, I looked it up. And I'm like, well, what name did you look up? He said, well, Jeremy P. Minor. And I'm like, oh, no, I'm, I'm not. I'm not Jeremy P. Minor. I'm Jeremy L. Minor. Lee, not not P. Jeremy Paul Minor. And he's like, oh, my gosh, I can't believe it. We, you know. So I got out of that. But that was really embarrassing. So there you go. Hopefully that helps. Okay, so never do that. That was it was really embarrassing. Okay, anyways, back to the the lawsuit guy. I don't, I don't know what's going on with you. Okay, I love you guys. Let's I digress. Let's go back into this. Okay, so if you're brand new, you just let's say you started me on you start following me on TikTok or IG or the Facebook groups or YouTube or, or wherever you're following at me. Okay, so Jeremy Miner, as you know, guy, apparently I have a lawsuit in Florida. I didn't even know the the guy on here. I can't even believe it. Just crazy stuff. 
So we have a sales training company. I'm the founder of that seventh level. And we train salespeople exactly like you watching me right here. So we train sales professionals like you. We train sales executives like you, sales leadership, sales management, coaches, consultants, entrepreneurs, business owners. Here's what we do. We train you certain techniques, certain questions, and especially how to use your tone that work with human behavior that works with human behavior. What do I mean by working with human behavior rather than working against it? Are you a hundred percent sure you understand what I mean by that? Because if you're not, that means you're losing sales that you could be making every single week that our clients who sell in your industry, they're making those sales every day, every week, every month. All right. Now here's what I'm going to have each of you to do before we get into the training real quick. Cause I'm going to go about 30 minutes here. Make sure you take notes, write down these notes. All right. And here's one suggestion I would have for you when I train you this. Okay. Do not share it with your friends who sell exactly what you do, who work for a competing company. Why would you not want to share what I'm about to show you with your friends who compete with you in your industry, because you don't want them to know this stuff. You want them to keep selling the way they have. So you separate yourself from the crowd of other salespeople. Now, if you've got a friend and you want to share this training with them or share whatever you've got here, you can share this, this, uh, YouTube or video, you can share this, uh, IG, you know, IG video or TikTok or Facebook group. You want to share that with them. If they're your friend and not in your industry, not competing against you, by all means, share with them. Don't share with people you compete with. No bueno for you if you want to separate yourself apart. All right. Now, here's what I'm going to have you do. Go ahead and grab your phone. Go down to the bottom part of your phone. And I want you to post. If you're on the live right now, post hashtag live. So if you're on the live right now, go to the comment section on your phone. I know each one of you are on there and post hashtag live. So if you're on the live right now, post hashtag live. And if you're on the replay, I'm going to have you post hashtag replay. So if you're on the live, post hashtag live. If you're on the replay, post hashtag replay. I better see hundreds of smashed hearts. I mean, we've got 442 people on IG alone, let alone TikTok and YouTube and the Facebook group and LinkedIn. There's probably 1,200 plus on all five platforms. A little bit light today. It should be around 2,000 of you. Everybody's in the holiday mood. So if you're on the live, post hashtag live. If you're on the replay, post hashtag replay. Now, I'm going to have each of you smash the heart button and smash the like button. So smash the heart button, smash the like button. Between all six platforms here, there's like 12, 1,300 of you on here. So smash the heart button, smash the like button. Better see hundreds smash hearts, hundred smash likes. Okay. Let me go through the training. You ever get your ear popping? You never like when you drive, when you fly in sometimes to like Denver, you know, high altitude or something, your ears ever pop. That happened to me on my way back from Australia. My ears started popping on the plane ever since I've been popping like crazy. I don't know what's going on. If you guys have a remedy, let me know. Cause I would really like to know. It is very difficult doing any type of training when your ear is popping and you can't quite, it's like swimmers here. You know what I'm saying? Anybody got swimmers here before? I'll get, get some of the swimmer stuff and put it back in there. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and put this over here. I'll do my best for you guys to be able to see this vibe board back here. Hopefully on TikTok, you guys can see that as best as I can. They're building out a whole new office for me right next to this office. It's like four times as big. So we can do a lot more uh, content and stuff in here. So you guys can actually see what I'm writing now. Here's what I'm going to do first. I'm first going to give you the generic version of this. Okay. So I'm going to give you a generic version. Somebody said, take a shower. Bob said, take a shower. I will do my best to take a shower. You know, that would probably be a good thing. I've been back for a week. So if I've not taken a shower in a week, that could be trouble, Bob. Could be trouble on Facebook. So I'm going to show you the generic version. I want you to write that formula down. I'm going to try to Put this down here so each of you can see it. And then I'm going to show you about six chew gum. Mark, brilliant. How did I not think of chewing gum? I I've tried that, Mark. It did not work. I must have a bad case of swimmers here or something. It did not work, but thank you, Mark. So I'm going to show you the generic version first so you can write down the formula. 
And then I'm going to show you like six or seven different industry specific examples from completely different industries. So you can see how the structure works. Now, what I'm also going to do to help you out, because I'm feeling jolly, jolly St. Nick, since Christmas is coming up, my favorite holiday, by the way, is I'm going to show you the tonality to use. Okay. NEPQ, neuro emotional persuasion questions, but I'm going to show you the tonality. All right. Now, once again, in this example, this is a lead you've already talked to, but they didn't buy. And now you're calling them back, following up, let's say three months, four months, six months later. Okay. So the likelihood of them remembering you, it just depends on what impression you left. Did you try to buy or die? Or did you leave that conversation where, because look, even when I was making almost $3 million a year in commissions in the four industries I sold in before I retired and started seventh level, I didn't close everybody. Anybody that tells you they didn't close anybody is just full of crap because you know that, right? Not everybody can get the funding for what you offer, right? So you're not going to close everybody. You can be the greatest salesperson on planet Earth. You're not going to close 100%. We all know that, right? So when you lead, though, if you do not get them to commit to take the next step to purchase what you're offering, you want them to feel that you are concerned for their situation staying the same. You are concerned for them that the problem or problems are going to stay the same and nothing ever is going to change. They feel the genuineness that you're concerned for them rather than you trying to buy or die. Now, that doesn't mean you, if they give you an objection, you just roll over and like, okay, uh, just call me back later. You're not going to sell that much doing it that way either. You go through everything you have to do to help them overcome their concerns or whatever. I would suggest you learn how to prevent the objections from happening. We teach you that in our, our client training board. It's much easier to say you make a lot more money and you prevent most objections from happening. Unless you just love to objection handle all day. Harder. Okay. So let's say that they don't buy. You want them to feel that you are genuinely concerned for the consequences that will happen because they didn't purchase what you're offering, solve their problems and get what they want. So when you call back, there's not this feeling of hate towards you. See, you want to be a top 1% earner. You got to view selling as collaborative. You working with the prospect to help them solve their problems and get them where they want to be. Don't view it as adversarial. You against the prospect trying to manipulate them and win them over so you can make money. I promise you, you will be a certain cap on your income. You will never be able to exceed what you are doing now. If you sell that way, there will be a cap. You will play the numbers game hardcore. And you eventually will burn out and you'll have to take lots of breaks. I never had to take any breaks because most people ended up purchasing, right? And if they didn't, when I called back a few months later, problems were still the same. I could re-engage them, trigger curiosity and get most of those people over the line. But it's how you do it that's going to set you apart. Okay. Everybody ready for this. All right. Okay. Let me move this around here for you. Okay, here's the generic version first. Pay attention as best as you can. I know some of you can't see the full board. Now, this is, is an example of what's called an NEPQ connection question. Now, if you're not one of our clients, you might not know this. NEPQ stands for Neuro Emotional Persuasion Questioning. So Neuro Emotional Persuasion Questioning, okay? It's what I developed for my background in university, uh, majoring in behavioral science, human psychology. My minor was in social dynamics, okay, which is really the study of the brain, how and why human beings make decisions and how they do that as a society. How, how do you have ranks, you know, rank framing? There's a whole bunch of stuff you learn in there that's pretty cool. Now, how do you do this where you don't come across salesy? Because what most of you do, what most of you have been trained to do is what? Hey, is this John? Hey, John. Yeah, it's Jeremy Miner. I'm just following up with you. I know we, t or hey, Sally. Yeah, it's, it's uh, Jeremy. I'm check I'm just checking in. We talked about, don't say the words following up with you, or I'm just checking in, in an email or a call. Why would I not want to use the words, I'm just following up with you, or I'm just checking in? Why? Because every salesperson that's ever tried to sell that prospect typically uses what words when they call back a lead who didn't buy when they first started talking to them. They use the same damn words, 
following up with you, just checking it. How many emails do you get right now from salespeople that say, hey, John, it's been six months. I know we were talking about X, Y, Z. I'm just checking in or I'm just following up. What is the first thing that goes through your mind when you read the email that says, I'm just following up with you or I'm just checking in? What's the first thing? Be honest with yourself. What is the first thing that goes through your mind? Salesperson trying to sell me something. Those are trigger words, right? If we use the same words that every salesperson uses that's ever tried to sell that prospect something, what does the prospect associate us with? All the other salespeople that they didn't like. So you immediately do what? Lower your status in the prospect's brain. I want to raise my status. So I'm just, I can eliminate those words or I can relanguage those words where I don't sound like everyone else. Okay, so take a look at what I'm doing. Hey, is Sally there? Yeah, hey Sally, hey, it's, yeah, it's just Jeremy uh, getting back to you. Now, here's what I'm gonna show you to do. I'm gonna show you a technique. Now, some of you are gonna think I'm a little bit crazy. But when I even cold called people who had never heard about the company I was selling for or any type of follow up call from somebody who didn't buy from before that I talked to, I would have papers here. And when I was on the phone, I would shuffle them. Can anybody tell me in the comments why I'd want to do something crazy like that? Why would I shuffle papers like that? Just take a wild guess. I'm going to show you. Hey, is, is John there? Yeah, hey, John, uh, Jeremy Miner, getting back to you. Yeah, we, uh, looks like we talked, uh, there's a couple, I don't know, here, I got my document. We talked a couple months ago about some problems that you were having with XYZ so that you guys could uh, actually ABC. Did you, uh, did you end up giving up on that or, or what, what actually happened? Let me do that again. Bobby, you're right. Sounds less salesy, right? Sounds less telemarketing. Sounds less corporate. It almost sounds like you're a clerk calling back about some issue with their, you know, property taxes or something like that. You've got this right here. Take a look at it again. Okay. Sounds too confused. Oh, Anthony, let me sound like I'm an expert like this. Hey, is John there? Hey, John. Yeah, it's Jeremy Miner. It looks like we talked a few months ago about some problems you're having with XYZ so that you could ABC. Uh, did you end up giving up on that or what happened? You can sound like an expert all you want with the lead who doesn't remember who you are. But they don't give a rat's ass. That just triggers that you're a salesperson. So I do want to act a bit confused about that conversation. Now, does that mean when I use a confused tone, when I get into the conversation or let's say I start going through my presentation that I'm going to act confused? Oh, I don't know how it works. Oh, no. But a confused tone in certain context, especially when you're calling back leads from months ago who don't remember you, actually triggers curiosity. I'm a behavioral scientist. I might actually know how your brain works. So I do want to act a bit confused. I don't want to act like a salesperson because if they feel like I'm a salesperson, they do what? They go into fight or flight mode if I sound like everybody else. So take a look like this. Yes, yeah, is, is John there? Hey, uh, John. Yeah, Jeremy Miner. Yeah, Jeremy. It's Jeremy getting back to you. Uh, we talked, I think it was about three months ago, about XYZ problems that you were having with your ABC thing. And you were talking about how it's preventing you from ABC. Did you guys end up giving up on that project or what, what actually happened? Confused tone triggers curiosity in this context. Now, there's a few other places in the contact or in the sales process. I might use a confused tone if I want to clarify, if I want them to clarify something. Like, let's say if they tell me they have a problem. Oh, you know, I've got uh, X, Y, Z problem and it's just causing me a lot of tension at work. Hold, hold on. How, how, how do you mean by tension? My confused tone triggers their instinctual part of their brain to say this. Now, they're not they're just reacting. They don't know what they're doing. But their brain is saying, oh, he didn't understand what I meant by tension at work. I need to better clarify that and expand on that for him. And that's how they start to expand and clarify. That's how you start to get a prospect to relive their pain. My tone, my confused tone triggers that reaction in their survival part of their brain. 
Hopefully that helps you guys. You got to practice this if you want to be great at sales. Now, that was an example of an NEPQ connection question. Now, why would I do that? There's a couple of things why I do that. Why would I shuffle papers when I'm talking, like I'm reading, like I'm looking at something? What does shuffling the papers do if I'm on the phone? What does that sound cause their brain to do? Well, it's this. It's an example of what we call in human behavior a pattern interrupt. What are they used to salespeople doing? Dead silent, one monotone voice, talking fast, nervous, and excited. That's what a prospect is used to. Okay. I want to interrupt that pattern because if I can't interrupt that pattern, the prospect doesn't let their guard down and the prospect goes into fight or flight. And went, oh, no, no, we're good. We're, we're not interested. And it's over. Okay. I want to interrupt that pattern. Now, what it also does, remember, confuse concern tone. Look what I said right here. I mean, did you, did you guys end up giving up on that or, or what actually happened? Confused concern tone. Write this down. Your tone is how your prospect interprets the intention behind every question you ask. That's how they interpret what's behind what you are saying or asking. That's how they interpret it. What is behind why they're saying that? That's how they interpret it. It's through your tone. If your tone sounds like this the whole time while you're talking and it's one monotone voice when you're asking questions, you're going to notice when you ask questions that your prospects are going to give you vague, generalized, surface level answers. But if I shift my tone, so what did you guys end up giving up on that or what, what actually happened? Like I'm confused. I'm concerned. Okay. Ah, we're getting somewhere right now. Okay. Let's go to a different, let's go to an industry here. Okay. Now I'm going to give you about six to seven completely different industries. And I'm going to show you the framework of how to start that call. Okay. Make sure you write this down. Okay. Let's take a look at it. Ring, ring, ring. The answer. Hey, is, uh, is Sally there? Hey, Sally. Yeah. It's, it's, just, it's a uh, Jeremy Miner. Yeah, Jeremy, uh, getting back to you. We uh, looks like we talked. It was gosh, I want to say it was like three months ago about some issues with your operations team that you brought up, and you had mentioned it was. I think you said it felt like it was preventing you guys from scaling because you're trying to get to like eleven or twelve million dollars a month in the business. Um, did you end up giving up on scaling, or what actually happened? Let's do it again. My tone is a little bit off. Hey, is John there? Yeah. Hey, John, uh, Jeremy Miner, getting back to you. Yeah, we uh, we talked. I think it was like three months ago about you mentioned you had some issues like with your operations team and you talked about how was, you felt it was possibly preventing you guys from being able to scale. I think you were at like 10 million a month. You're trying to get to 12. Did you guys end up giving up on scaling or what what actually ever happened to that? See now, see how my tone is confused. Did you end up giving up on scaling or, or what actually happened? No, we didn't give up on scaling. Oh, well, what have you what, what have you been doing about it? Because I know we were talking about X, Y, Z. What what happened with that? And then I'm going to go right into my first what are called situation questions. I'm also going to have a concern tone there because remember, my tone is how the prospect interprets the intention behind the question I'm asking. OK. I've gotten a bit clunky at calling brand new leads. You don't want to get clunky there for sure. All right, let's go to a completely different industry. Let me tell my uh, my VP of sales I'm going to be a little bit late. Okay. I'm going to take a little bit longer for this for you guys. Okay. Now, let's say in this example, you sell life insurance. Okay. This is the... I think this is the first or second largest industry we train now. It always flip flops between real estate and life insurance like every other day or week. But this is the train hundreds of thousands in this space. That means life insurance, uh, general life, mortgage protection, final expense, IULs, a bunch of different things. All right. Same thing here. Same type of thing that we're trying to do here. Yeah. Is, is, uh, is, is Sally uh, Johnson there? Yeah. Hey, Sally, it's uh, it's just Jeremy Miner. We we talked. You remember we talked a few months ago. Uh, you had responded to an ad about like financial protection. You're asking about like different options, like life insurance, like when something happens to you. So 
Dan and the kids would be able to keep the house in school. Um, did you did you guys end up giving up on that or what what actually happened? Okay, let me do that again. Hey, is, is John there? Yeah, John. Hey, uh, Jeremy Miner, getting back to you. Um, we talked, I think it was two months ago. Uh, I was out at your house uh, about like different uh, options for like life insurance, like when something happens to you. So Cindy and the kids would be able to go to the same school, the same house. Um, did you guys end up giving up on that or what, what actually, what actually happened? Confused tongue, confused, concerned tongue. Okay. Uh, let's see. Okay, here we go. Let's go to again. Let's go to a completely different industry. Uh, type in me if you're in the home improvement industry. I want to say this is the sixth or seventh largest industry we train. Okay, huge industry we train in as well. And let's say that when you're out there, they were looking at different options to upgrade their cabinets so they could sell the home for more money. Let's say they had some outdated cabinets, but they ended up not buying. Okay, I'm calling them back. Let's say. I don't know, four months later, my ears are popping in here. Yeah, is, is John there? Hey, uh, John, uh, Jeremy Miner. Yeah, Jeremy Miner getting back to you. You guys, looks like you had me over at your house. I think it was like, ah, geez, three, four months ago, you were, you know, you're looking at like different options to possibly upgrade your cabinet so you guys could sell the the property, like a higher price point. Did you did you guys end up giving up on that or, or what what actually happened? See how I'm slowing down. I didn't write one for cybersecurity on here, but that's a huge industry we train. Somebody on IG. Yeah, it's probably a top 20 industry we train. Train some huge companies in that for sure. Yeah, is John there? Uh, hey, John. Uh, uh, I haven't included females here. I need to do this. Hey, is, is, is uh, let's do Amy. Hey, is, is uh, Amy Johnson there? Yeah, Amy. Uh, Jeremy Miner, uh, getting back to you. We... Uh, you guys had me over at your house on the Willow Lane home. I think it was like two months ago. You're looking at like different options to maybe upgrade your cabinet so you could sell the property for more. Did you guys end up giving up on that or what What actually happened? Home security, use industry train as well. That was the first job I had. I don't know if I still hold the records for that, for that space. It probably been broken by now. It's a long time ago. Okay. Business lending. Maybe you're, you sell, you could sell for uh, merchant, you, maybe you sell merchant cash advances to businesses to help them make payroll that are behind or to scale their business. Or maybe you give lending to companies so they can grow and scale their business like SM, you know, small businesses so they can scale. Okay. And for whatever reason, you met with them a couple months ago and they didn't end up buying. Let's take a look. Look at the structure. It's exactly what? Exactly the same. Network marketing, huge industry, health insurance, huge industry. We train uh, several divisions of United Healthcare, second largest health insurance company in the nation now. Huge. Every industry, you guys, do you train this? Do you train that? Well, since we train 161 industries and Forbes said there's only 163, more than likely we probably already train companies and individual salespeople in your space. Just going to go out on a limb with that. Okay, here we go again. Yeah, is is uh, is this George? Hey, George, uh, it's Jeremy Miner getting back to you. I, I, I had a few minutes. I just had a few minutes before my next call. Uh, we, gosh, I want to say we talked, it might have been five or, or six months ago. You guys were looking at possibly getting like a, a million dollars in like funding so you could scale the company. Did you guys end up on on did you guys end up giving up on scaling or, or what actually happened? Let me do it again. Pay attention to the thing. See, the format is pretty much similar to every single industry I've done so far. Every single one. Yeah, is is, uh, is this John? Hey, John. Yeah, it's James uh, Miller. I'm just getting back to you. We I, I just had a few minutes before my next call. Uh, now, I want to say we, we met at your office. It was probably five, maybe six months ago. You guys were looking at possibly uh, getting like a line of credit. I think it was like 900,000 to a million. Uh, so you guys could like scale out uh, the, the farm equipment that you guys were selling. Did you guys end up giving up on scaling or what, what actually happened? See what I'm doing there. Now, I added a new wrinkle in here to show you how to build status. Why would I say I just had a few minutes before my next appointment or my next call? Why would I say 
I just had a few minutes before my next appointment. What does that imply? That I'm busy. I've got lots of clients. People are coming to me. I'm not sitting around just having to call these people back. I just had time to get back to you. I just had a few minutes before my next call. Now, what it also does in their mind, when I say I just had a few minutes before my next call, it helps what? Lower their guard. It helps disarm them because they feel like you're not going to take a lot of their time. Okay. Now, is it going to matter two or three minutes later when I start using my tone and asking certain questions that trigger curiosity engagement, and then I start building a gap? Are they going to remind me seven minutes in when I start building a gap and I get them to open up emotionally that I said it was I only had a few minutes for my next appointment? No, because now they're engaged. They're emotionally bought in. You're triggering emotional drivers. Even if, even if they one out of a million said, hey, I thought you said you only had two minutes. Yeah, I, I did. I just uh, my next client I was supposed to be on with. Uh, just sent me a text. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be. I sent him a text. I'm gonna be running a little bit behind. So hopefully they'll forgive me. But I don't have much longer to talk to you. And then you go right back in. That should rarely ever happen to you. Okay. Let me show you a completely different industry. Let's say if you sold solar, huge industry we train in. Probably, I want to say, I have to look at the stats. Probably third or fourth, maybe fifth largest industry we train in now. Let's take. Let's take a look at it. This example would be over the phone, Josh. These are leads you're calling back, following up with that didn't buy when you originally talked to them. Okay. Yes. Underwater basket wheezing, Tim. I love that. Okay. So take a look at this. Sally. Yeah. Hey, Sally. Uh, Jeremy Miner getting back to you. We, we talked, gosh, I want to say it was maybe two or, or three months ago. You guys had talked about uh, maybe putting solar in so you could like lower your power bill. Uh, kind of locking your rate. And I, I think you've mentioned kind of protect yourself from like rate hikes from Nevada energy. Did you guys end up giving up on that or what, what actually happened? See, that's a long one. So I have to what kind of pace that out. I have to verbal pace that out. Take a look at it again. Hey, is it, uh, is this bill? Yeah. Hey, Bill, uh, Jeremy Miner getting back to you. Yeah. We, gosh, I want to say we talked, I think I knocked on your door like it might have been two or, or three months ago. You know, I'm that guy in the in the orange shirt. Uh, you you were looking at possibly putting in solar so that you could you know, like lower your bill and kind of lock your rate in and kind of you know protect yourself against the rate hikes from Nevada Energy. What, whatever happened? Did you end up giving up on that or or what actually happened? Okay, just another way to do it. Confused tone triggers curiosity keeps them on the phone the paper shuffling is a pattern interrupt that helps keep them engaged that's what i'm doing let's take a look at another example let's say if you sold a marketing agency and you're selling leads uh and let's say you're talking to a real estate agent now why would a real estate agent want better leads well am i selling leads to the real estate agent or am i selling the results of what the leads do, which is to get them more listings and make them more money. Or let's say if I'm selling a company, am I selling a company leads or am I selling them the results of what the leads do for them, which is to grow the business so they can make more profits. Okay. See what I'm doing here. Hey, is, is Amy there? Uh, yeah, Amy, uh, Jeremy Miner. I, I just had time uh, to get back to you. It looks like we, gosh, I want to say that we, we've met on zoom. I think it was maybe three months ago. You, you had talked about, you know, it's your real estate business, getting a higher quality lead so you could get more listings, you know, sell more homes. Uh, what, whatever happened to that? Did you, did you give up on that or, or what actually happened? Let me do it again. Hello, this is Amy Weaver. Amy. Yeah. Hey, it's, um, Jeremy, Jeremy Miller. I just, I had time to Finally get back to you. I'm going to say we talked, gosh, it, I think we met on Zoom virtually maybe two or, or three months ago. You were looking at about getting like a higher, you know, possibly getting a higher quality lead uh, to get more listings to, to kind of really grow your your business. Did you end up giving up on that or or what, what actually happened? Okay, see what I did. 
Now, what did I just do right here? When I said here, I threw, I threw you a new wrinkle here. When I use this line, I just had time to get back to you. What does that actually do in a prospect's mind? Remember, I already talked to this lead three months ago. For whatever reason, they didn't close. They didn't purchase. So when I say I just had time to get back to you, what does that imply? It implies, wouldn't this sound a bit annoying? Marina, what do you mean? What sounds more annoying? A cheesy salesperson talking fast? Do you have two minutes of your time? Hey, I know we talked about two months ago. Do you have two minutes I can talk to you about XYZ solution? Is that going to open up the prospect? Or using your tone to trigger curiosity and to use pattern interrupts going to trigger a prospect to actually engage and become curious enough to have a two-way conversation? Or well, clients in your space would probably tell you the difference there. It's a difference between you making the sale and getting rejected almost on every call. Depends on how much money you want to make. How much sales do you want to make? Okay. You can work with human behavior or we can work against it. Play the numbers game or play the skills game. Our clients, they play the skills game. They don't have to play the numbers game. They don't have to go through numbers and numbers and numbers to make one sale to just make enough money to get by. That doesn't sound very fun. Okay. Anyways, let's go back. I digress. All right. Now, what am I doing here? I just, I just had time to get back to you. Yeah, Amy. Yeah. I just, uh, Jeremy Miner. I just had time to, to get back to you. I think we talked, I want to say two or three months ago, uh, you were looking at maybe getting a higher quality lead to, to get more listings, you know, for your real estate business you had just started. So you could, uh, you know, grow the business. Did you end up giving up on that or what? What actually happened? Okay. Now, why would I say I just had time to get with you? Because it raises your status. Experts and trusted authorities are what? In demand. They're not available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Broke salespeople, they are available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And do you know why they're available? Because they don't have many clients. That's why they're available. Salespeople who make tons of sales, they're viewed as experts. They're viewed as authorities because they've got lots of business going on. That's why they're not available all the time. They're busy because they solve problems and get results. Broke salespeople, they're available any hour of the day because they're not making many sales. They don't have many clients. So their status is lowered in the prospect's mind. Anytime says says, hey, I'm available. Anytime you call me on the weekends, 9 p.m. Sunday at night, automatically in most people's mind, that would tell you that they don't have much going on if they're available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Now, that doesn't mean that you say, hey, I'm never available. But what that means is I could relanguage that and say, let's say they're like, oh, I could call you back next week sometime and they're waffling. Well, I don't know if I'd be randomly available with my schedule with other clients. Uh, what I can do if it helps you is I can give you, uh, if you have your calendar handy, I can pull up mine and have you book a specific time with me. That way you don't have to chase me down and vice versa. Would, would that help you if I did that for you? Now, what did I just do? I raised my status. I don't know if I'd be available randomly like that with my schedule, with clients. What I can do if it helps you is if you have a if you have a, a calendar handy, I can pull up mine and have you book a specific time with me. Uh, that way you don't have to chase me down and vice versa. Would that help you if I did that for you? Would that help you if I did that for you? See, the, I'm getting the prospect to qualify to me. You guys have been taught that you're trying to qualify to them. Why the hell would you qualify to them? Who has the problems? You are the prospect. You do. You don't have the problems. They do. Why are you begging for them to meet you? Who has the solution to solve their problems? You do. You just haven't been trained how to do that. See, you now realize it's not your fault that you were trained that way, but it is your what? 
Well, it is your problem. Right? So you've been trained that you have to do all the work. Right? You have to do all the selling. You have to do all the convincing. You have to do all the chasing. You have to overcome their objections with rebuttals that, as you know, very rarely work. That's why you play the numbers game. That's why they get defensive. You've been trained that you've got to push and pressure. And that's gotten you to the income you're at. Nothing more, nothing less. And you'll stay there forever, right? It's capped. Ah, oh, that sucks. We're going to train you. If you're one of our clients, I mean, you'll learn a little bit of stuff from the free reels, but that's just basic stuff. We're going to train you for your industry how to get your prospects to do all the work, how to get your prospects to sell themselves, how to get your prospects to qualify themselves to you, how to get your prospects to overcome their own concerns, and how to get your prospects to pull you in. Which way do you want to do? Do I want to work against human behavior or do I want to work with human behavior? Now, in the comment section, before I have to get off here, type in the amount of, uh, let's just, uh, let's just do this. I'll give you a little exercise in the comment section. If you're on TikTok, Instagram, LinkedIn here, YouTube, the Facebook group sales revolution, the Facebook business page, or my Facebook type in the amount, the amount of money or commissions you feel you should be making if you acquired a higher skill level to sell what you're selling. So type in the amount in the comments section of money on top of what you're already making. It's going to be different for everybody. Type in the amount that you feel you could make more than what you are right now if you acquired the right skills. Like, is it 2000 more a month? Is it 5000 more a month? Wh whatever it is for you. Some of you like, I could make 20000 more a month. I don't know. You tell me. How much more money could you make if you acquired the right skills in your industry, because this is very basic what I showed you. It's just like, it's like a puzzle that has 587,623 pieces in it. And I just showed you one piece of that. Are you going to triple your sales from that? More than likely, no, because you don't know what to do after that. You don't even really know what to do before that. And emails or texts, you don't know much about that. It's just basic, right? Okay, so some of you are like two grand extra a month, 15 extra a month, 20,000 a month, 10 extra thousand a month, 14,000 more a month, 20,000 more a month, 5,000 more a month. 5,000 more a month here on IG, 15,000 more a month. These are spewing in 10,000, 10,000, 35,000 euro, 15,000 more a month. TikTok, 2,000 more a month, 50K more a month. That means euro, I'm not sure. Okay, we've got a bunch of people over here. All right, that's a lot of different things here. Now, can you provide an example for financial company B2B outbound calling? Thank you. That would be all of in our, our virtual training uh, platforms. You have a really cool name, Keir, Kiersel, Maven, Abella, David. I can't even pronounce it. I'm from Arkansas. As my mama would say, we're not the sharpest tool in the sheds down there from the city I was born in. I'm not going to say the city because I'm not going to fit anybody. Uh, but that all be in our, our virtual uh, uh, training center for our clients because that's more industry specific, especially when you're advanced inner circle. So uh, message me directly if you want details about that. Okay. <laughs> I subscribe to any PQ in seventh level. They are fantastic. Josh, good for you. Now, the amount that you just typed in, whether it was an, hey, I want to make an extra two or 3,000 a month. I got to learn more skills. I got to be more advanced. Or you want to make an extra 5,000 more a month. Whatever you typed in yourself, because that's you, not me. Okay. You want to make an extra 10 or 15,000, whatever you typed. The question is, how are you going to do that? How? Are you going to watch some free reels that are 60 seconds? I do on Instagram. You're going to quadruple your sales from 60 second reels. How are you going to do that? If you ask the same question you're asking now, if you don't know how to use your tone yet for what you sell, 
to get your prospects to let their guard down. If you don't know how to prevent most objections from happening in your prospect's mind, how are you going to make the extra money by doing the same thing you always have? Selling the same way. Tell me how. If you want to double your sales, are you going to double your working hours? You already work eight to 10 hours a day. You're going to work 16 to 20. Is that realistic? So if you can't double your hours, you have to do what? You have to acquire a much more advanced sales ability than what you've currently been trained. Would we be right on that? Now, if you want to acquire those skills to make the amount of money you typed in, what's your next step? You got to do something, right? Rather than hope and pray, it's just going to magically change. Call that hopium. It's a drug that so many salespeople and entrepreneurs take. Hope and pray that somehow I'm going to do better. Man, I'd rather have more control, right? As my bishop once said when I was a kid, God feeds the birds, but he doesn't drop worms in their nest. Think about that. God feeds the birds. He doesn't drop worms in their nest, though. They have to do something. So if you want to do something about what you typed in, message me directly right now. So if you're on Instagram or TikTok here, message me directly right now. Just DM me. I'm not that cool. Kind of a nerd. Eh, kind of a eh, nerd. Yeah, I like reading. If you're on LinkedIn, if you're on the Facebook group, Sales Revolution, 100 and almost 2,000 of you on there. If you're on the Facebook business page, 165,000 or whatever you're on there. IG, how many we got IG followers now? 605,000, 100 some thousand on TikTok. If you're in the Facebook group, Facebook business page, LinkedIn, YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, your next step? No, message me directly right now. Now there'll be... And there'll be several hundred of you that will message me, probably at least two or three hundred of you on these lives that will message me. So when you message me, can you do yourself a favor if you want to sell more? Will you be open when we message you back? I'm not going to be able to message all 300 of you back. I'll do my best. I'll message you probably 10 percent of you. But we'll have seven or eight other people in our social media team that will message you. They might message you underneath my account as well with many chat set up. Now, when we message you, they're going to ask you some questions about what you feel you're saying and maybe asking or maybe how you're using your tone that's causing so many of your prospects who have problems that your solution can solve still not buy from you. So will you do yourself a favor and actually open up and tell them the truth? Or are you going to stay guarded, closed-minded, up? Oh. I know everything there is to know about selling. I'm not going to open up. What good is that doing you? Yeah. So once we find out kind of, you know, those details, and if you're an individual salesperson, kind of where you're at now with your sales ability, that basically your income tells us what your sales ability is. You are what your commission check says you are, right? Just like John Men says in, NFL, you are what your record says you are. In sales, you are what your sales and your commission checks say you are. Nothing more, nothing less. Once you admit that, then you can make changes to get a lot better. But if we have a huge ego, blame it on our prospects. We're the greatest salespeople in the world, yet we're not making that much money. Nothing we can do for you, right? Everything stays the same. So once we find out kind of what your skill level is compared to what you're wanting it to be, that tells us kind of which training program we would suggest you get into. Because we don't have like one product, one price, one training program, one price. I think we have 35, 36 different versions now uh, for, for different industries, different people, different reasons why we put you in there based on your skill level. Like if you're only making two or 3,000 a month, we're not going to even let you into our advanced inner circle program. It'd be too far advanced for you. Okay. You have to make a certain amount of money even to be in that program. Okay. We're going to start you at a more foundational program to build your skill level up where you get certified. And then eventually you can move up into more advanced training courses 
and group trainings that we have with our sales trainers and myself. So you want to acquire the skills, message me directly right now and we'll message you back. We love you guys. You guys are amazing. Uh, Merry Christmas. I will see you tomorrow though, because I am going live here tomorrow in the Facebook group. Now we don't go live on Instagram or TikTok on Wednesdays because on Wednesdays we interview a client from a completely different industry and we break down their sales process and we answer your questions. You, that's usually about a 35 to 45 minute live where me and the client answers your questions that you have. There you go. So tomorrow we'll be going live inside the Facebook group only. So if you're on IG or TikTok, or if on YouTube or LinkedIn or the Facebook business page and you want to be on that live, uh, there's a link here on StreamYard here down in purple with the Facebook group there, salesrevolution.pro. So salesrevolution.pro. So if you're on IG, go to salesrevolution.pro. If you're on TikTok, go to salesrevolution.pro. Or you can just go into the search on your Facebook and just type in sales revolution and you can join that for free. There's a hundred, almost 102,000 salespeople in that group. Now, if you're a business owner or you're a C-level executive or a chief sales officer, a VP of sales or senior vice president, your over sales team or sales manager, you want to look at training options for your salespeople. We train every, you know, we train companies all the way. We have a few fortune 100 clients. One of them is Exxon Mobil. We now train some big divisions with Exxon. That's an interesting process. Good company, actually. We even train huge dental implant companies. Who knew that was billions of dollars a year? Train lots of companies, all the way from Fortune 100, Fortune 500, down to SMB, small companies, down to individual salespeople who sell in pretty much every industry at this point. So uh, if you want those training options so you can sell more, uh, message me directly. And if you're looking for training for your your organization, your teams, if you're a sales manager, VP of sales, senior vice president or chief sales officer, or even a CEO, doesn't matter the size of your company, we're in everything, uh, message uh, us directly and we'll put you in contact with our team who handle uh, big corporate accounts that we're in. Anyways, love you guys and I will see you tomorrow. That live will be in the Facebook group, Sales Revolution only tomorrow, right on the dot at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thanks, everybody. Merry Christmas. Talk to you guys soon. I am out of here. I'm late for a meeting. Always going over time for you guys. What am I going to do with you? Okay, we'll see you guys soon. If you can't figure out how to message me directly, you're like, I don't know how to message on here. I don't know what to do. Then just post hashtag NEPQ, hashtag NEPQ, and uh, we'll, we'll message you back. Anyways, thanks for all of you. Love you guys. Is it true that Jeremy Miner stole all of the sales system for Michael Oliver? Well, I've, you know, I've went through 1400 plus sales books. I love Michael. Michael wouldn't even say that. Michael and I are actually good friends. Ask him. He wouldn't say that. Uh, Michael actually worked for Seven Love when I first started five years ago. He's actually really good. He, he specializes in training network marketers. He's got a really good book for network marketers, I would suggest. Uh, but when you, you know, when you're with the background I have, behavioral science and human behavior, uh, that's really where NEPQ came from. Um, you know, and I've taken, geez, over 23 years, I've probably, well, I have to count them up, but I bet you I've taken close to 400 different sales training courses. So probably wouldn't come from one person. Although Michael's a great guy, great human being, actually. Okay, anyways, love you guys. I digress. I got to get out of here.